Morning guys, it's 7.30. We're gonna be following, finding out exactly how I eat to get strong today. But first of all, me and Carly are going to do the partner workout at the box. Let's do it. Before we get into the nitty gritty of this vlog, I need to give you a little bit of a heads up of what not to do with this video. Don't take it literally. It's so easy when you see the title, what I eat in a day or four days eating, that you think, oh, I have to eat avocados because he eats avocados. These videos should never be about that. It's about getting the habits, the why I take supplements, the how I set my food prep up and why I only food prep certain amounts of food, why I don't do all of my calories, why I do this, why I do that, basically the things that help me avoid binging and that kind of stuff. So take the things behind the messages, which makes no sense whatsoever. But anyway, let's go work out. Ali, fill yeah. us in. How are you feeling? I feel like this. <laughs> <laughs> so the first workout is 12 minutes. No, 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 the first workout was a warm up where first we just workout. had to do some push ups. Yeah, I couldn't do a push up. We're doing ground to overhead, so we've got two bars. It's max effort ground to head between you in one minute. And then on the minute, every minute, it's five synchro burpees. So it's gonna be about 40 seconds, so probably 20 seconds each on the bar to get as many reps as we can. And then five synchro burpees each minute for 12. It's gonna be really gassy. Absolutely sucked. It was an AMRAP for 12 minutes of 30 slam balls, 15 front squats with 22.5s, and then a rope climb each. We got five rounds. One more workout to go. This is going up in twos, isn't it, babe? Yeah. It's two dumbbell snatches, two synchro sit ups, four, oh, four, six, six. Up oh. Sucked. Workout done. Let's get some food. To the kitchen. Let's get this show on the road with some breakfast. So it looks like this. Four eggs, one bagel, and I'm adding in a whole avocado. I do need to say, actually, at this point, if you follow us on social media, you'll also notice that recently we've been getting most of our food from an awesome food prep company called Balanced Meals. I'm taking a bit of a break over Easter, hence the video, because it makes a little bit more sense. But anyway, when it comes to my training and prepping at the moment, breakfast is one of the main meals that I will always, always, always make from fresh, because there's nothing worse than starting the day with something that you made the night before, you're not a little bit, you're not particularly that keen on it. Breakfast sorted, and as I always have, three in the morning, X endurance my glucosamine, and also my immune boost, which is basically my, my daily multivit. I have them every morning, these two in the evening again. Uh, glucosamine just once a day. Breakfast sorted. So as I want to say at this point, another point, which is a bit of a, I would say it's a really, really contentious, and it can be a bit of a sensitive subject sometimes, and hence why I'm doing this kind of video, and I make the point of saying, it's not exactly what I'm eating, it's how and why, that kind of stuff, right? The way that people eat nowadays and the food products that they choose to eat is entirely up to them, right? There's a lot of people who want to attack others because they're not vegan, right? And it's something that we keep our mouth shut all the time because we're like, you know what? 
each to their own. We're a very inclusive channel. If you've been watching us for a while, I know that there's a lot of vegans who watch us out there. One of the guys who I know is a bit of a legend is Hench Herbivore. He watches us. He gives us his opinion on stuff, but he supports us because of the bigger picture. Most vegans are like that, but me choosing to eat eggs is my choice, right? So before what I call a few of the keyboard warriors get on there and go, oh my God, you're eating animal products. I'm not stupid. I know that I'm eating animal products. I choose to eat this way because that's the way that I choose and that is my opinion and that is my choice and the same with anyone else out there. So don't worry, don't think that I'm trying to say, oh you have to eat eggs, you have to eat meat because that's what I'm eating. It's entirely up to you. So also as well as me not telling you that, don't listen to anyone else who tells you you should or shouldn't be eating certain things. You know, it's, it's a free world. Do what you like, do what you choose. So anyway, that being said, I've got that out of the way. It frustrates me and I have to just say because I'm like, I look through the comments sometimes and I'm like, irresponsible for choosing to eat what I eat. <laughs> I choose what I eat. You don't have to watch it. You don't have to eat what I eat. You know, it's just, Weird world we live in, hey? Anyway, breakfast done, plenty of water, supplements going in. Then I will catch up with you because I'm gonna be food prepping for my lunch and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna have. Give me five minutes. Let's get today's food prepped. And if you watched my video that I did a couple of months ago, which was how to set your TDE or find out how many calories you should be eating a day, you'll know that first of all, I don't measure or include into my macros my greens. I just get a ton of them in there. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a little card up there so you can go and check that video out. Because essentially, now that I'm working to get strong, for me it's all about being in a slight calorie surplus, which basically means I'm gonna eat more calories than I'm burning a day because I wanna kind of get a little bit heavier hopefully, if I can finally get a little bit heavier. And also as well, to perform, to perform a little bit more efficiently, I'm gonna be training twice a day a couple of the times, and that basically means more calories. So, lunch, the two meals that I'm gonna to prep today are looking like this. Obviously, I don't normally lay it all out like this, I'm not that bad, but <clears throat> four good handfuls of greens. I normally put a handful of asparagus, handful of broccoli together in one meal, and then the same for the other. Then carbohydrate sauce, a good handful, maybe a little bit more, because these are gonna go up a little bit more. Potatoes, and both of those. And my protein sauce is gonna be two tuna steaks. And when I talk about protein, carbohydrates, fat sauce, and that kind of stuff, if you're just getting into it and you kind of just want to start doing a little bit of food prep, worry more about your overall calories. Don't start separating it into different macro splits and everything like that. That comes further down the line. It's just the fact that I'm choosing to track my macros. So how I'm gonna prepare these, these are gonna get steamed because it keeps more of the nutrients, which is always good. The oven is currently on full heat, because so I'm gonna basically cut these in half, douse them with some olive oil for extra calories as well, sprinkle a little bit of pepper, garlic, thyme, and what else am I gonna put on there? Some salt. These I'm just gonna sear six to eight minutes each side. I don't like an overcooked tuna steak, so the longer they are cooked, the more tough they go, and they kind of taste a little bit rank if you overcook them. Do that, get them into a Tupperware box, and then, ready to roll on with the rest of the day. One piece of reassurance I wanna offer, and a bit of advice if you are somebody who's worrying about food prep. First of all, if your goal is to lose weight, your goal is to build muscle, whatever it may well be, you do not need, 100% need, to food prep, you don't. It's a case of it just being easier to avoid the little snacks and the treats. If you're somebody who finds it hard to kind of walk into a shop just to grab a coffee without going, oh, that's a nice chocolate bar, then food prep could be a good way because then you just kind of take that worry away straight away. And also if you're somebody who's kind of really dieting for low percentage body fat, then food prep's always gonna be a way of kind of being in control. For me, it's just the fact that I'm all over the place. But the tip that I will give, if you are somebody who is going to food prep, Take the time and do it properly. Treat yourself in that food prep. You'll notice that I'm not just gonna boil my potatoes, cut them in half and chuck them in a tub because I'm somebody who has to enjoy my meals. And you know what it's like, I've done all the food prep where it was like chicken, rice and veg, chicken, rice and veg, no marinade, no this, no that, and it was just bland. So if you're gonna do it, do it properly. Spend a little bit of time, find some new recipes, use different marinades and ingredients, things that can kind of spice it up a little bit, just to kind of keep you interested and make you want that meal rather than looking at it and going, oh, yeah, food prep again, great. While that's all cooking, onto the fun part, the snacks. My current go-tos are, first of all, I need to apologize because I've already started this, but the Soaring Chocolate Loaf, Absolutely amazing. I also love the banana one. And then in another tub, I have like a, I'm quite a picky person, so I like to kind of have a little snack during the day. Handful of nuts, I'll normally weigh them out. Same, with raisins as well, or sultanas, and then 
some of this orange intense chocolate. All I do is basically break off about four or five squares, depending on where my calories are and where it sits in my fitness pal. Crumble it all up, chuck it all into a Tupperware box with the nuts, with the sultanas, mix it all up, and it's a nice little on-the-go snack, a nice little bit of sweetness, that kind of stuff. And that is pretty much it in terms of the, the prepped side of things. And um, we'll cover when I mean prepped, as in how much I prep and how much I don't, in just a sec. So while that's all being cooked now, just waiting for the potatoes to come out, let's try and, I'm gonna try and predict the future and answer a couple of the questions that you might have before they kind of come in, in the comment box below. If you want some expansion on them, do feel free to leave any comments below, any questions that you feel like I might have missed and you've still got, put them below and I'll watch this video for the next few days and see what I can do for you. One of the main ones, how many times do you eat a day? Right, so that food prep that I've done and the breakfast that I've had will allow me another meal um, and I'll have that later on. There's no calculation in terms of that. There's no, I have X amount of meals each day. It does vary depending on where I am, what I'm eating. Obviously, I kind of move around quite a lot. But if you're thinking for yourself, it's dictated by calories, right? Whatever the goal is, we've said it for years and years now, it comes down to your calories first and foremost. So if you're somebody who goes, well, I work shifts and I only get like a four hour, five hour window throughout the day to eat, as long as you're getting all of your calories for that day, that's all I'm worried about. Yes, it could be more optimal. There's different things that you can do, protein synthesis, all this kind of stuff when we're talking about pulse and that through the day. It has a minimal effect and a minimal thing to kind of consider at a basic level. So that for me is enough and then also it just leaves me another meal because again for sanity I don't really want to be eating everything out of a Tupperware box. What are the other kind of questions that we'd get asked? Should you food prep every day if you food prep? Um, that comes down to the individual. I think if you're somebody who finds it really hard to kind of or in the education side of things, you walk into a shop and you haven't really got too much of an idea what calories are and macros are and what things contain what, then yeah, it could be a good idea, but personally I wouldn't say do it all the time because the problem you've got is that when life comes and goes and you turn around and you go on holiday or you go away with the lads or the girls or something like that and it isn't perfectly prepped and you haven't got the kitchen that you need to prep your food, then you're kind of gonna be screwed. So it's a case of having a nice, I tend to, when, like I say, I haven't been with balanced meals, I'll normally prep through the week, normally on a Saturday. Don't know why, it's just one of those things. Saturday can be a real tipping point for me. If it's Saturday and Sunday, I can get a little bit lazy, but I'll prep on the Saturday, and then Sunday's just completely rain-free. It's not a cheat day or a cheat meal or anything like that. It's just I don't particularly track. I still sit around the same amount of calories, roughly, but that's just through years of doing it now and then back to it again on a Monday. Finally, does food prep take loads of time? Yes, it does. Doesn't take as long as anyone out there would ever, ever imagine to think. It used to take me less time than it does now, I'll be completely honest, but that's just because I like to make proper meals. When I used to just do chicken, rice, and veg, I'd chuck it all in one tray, chuck it in the oven, cook it however I was gonna cook it, and that would be it. But because now I use seasoning, I cook different things with different timings, I would say, like that whole process, obviously if I wasn't filming it, probably about half an hour and that's my whole day sorted. So yes, I'll get up a little bit earlier. Today obviously we went for a workout, did that fasted if you wanna call it that. I just had a black coffee beforehand. But normally I'll get up and I'll do my food prep first thing in the morning or if I'm having a lazy day or I know that I've gotta get up quite early to travel the following day, I'll do it the last thing that I do the day before. So like eight, nine o'clock, I'll go and food prep, get everything ready and then I can just get up and go in the morning. I better go and get my food sorted. Oh yeah. There we have it, two meals sorted. You know you've got your veg right when you have to have a whole separate Tupperware for it. And then banana, chocolate, malt loaf, nut seed mix, which I told you about. Oh yeah. Food prep sorted, let's have a look at some of the other supplementation that I'm using at the moment. So, the one that you'll always know that I use is creatine monohydrate. I get mine from Reflex at the moment, it's really good. Local store that I go to is Hero. They're pretty knowledgeable dudes in there. Protein wise, I've been using the X Endurance protein recently um, just because I wanted to change it up and try something different. It's really quite tasty, quite a fine protein. This stuff, Optimum Nutrition, I've used this 
many of times over the years along with their casing. Carly's got loads of it at the moment, so I'm gonna start cracking on with some of this as well. And on the on train, I've just got this as well, thanks to Carly, which is the BCA Sustain and Train, which is essentially a leucine mix with vitamin C and magnesium in there as well, vitamin C to help support the immune system, magnesium to help support the muscles and recovery. And that is essentially my stack. Again, on the front of supplementation, that kind of stuff, all of these things, not 100% necessary. I take protein because I find it hard to get the amounts that I wanna get in during the day through my food sources, so I just have that as a nice, convenient way. More so, I'll tend to have two protein shakes on a day that I'm being a little bit lazier, I'm traveling a little bit more, so it's easier, again, just to get the protein in. Creatine monohydrate is something that I've always raved about. It helps my strength massively. I don't cycle it, I literally continually take it every four to six months, I'll have a couple of weeks off. And this stuff is brand new. So I've been trying it for the last few days. Strawberry and kiwi, just nice and sweet when you're training. Um, and I'll let you know what I think. And that is pretty much it. I will obviously have a meal with Carly tonight. We're gonna do something because it's the weekend and we're rock stars. And like I said, I just wanna come back to the point. One more point I wanna make. God, I've made a lot of points in this video. Sorry guys, I've been like Bleh. Right, so don't take the what. The what meaning the exact foods that I'm eating. Don't take that away. Take the why and the how, the processes. When I'm getting up early in the morning, I make it the night before. In the morning, taking a little bit more time, making a couple of the meals from scratch every day to eat fresh because sanity is a real important factor when it comes to training and nutrition. And if you're just eating out of Tupperware boxes consistently all the time, it gets tedious. So set yourself up to win. Maybe just prep one meal for each day to start with, and then after a couple of weeks, prep two, and then just build it up from there. Before that, if you don't know what your calories are that you need, like I said, there was a card in the video, go back and find it, TDEE, Total Daily Energy Expenditure, all the calories you'll need, including TEF, NET, all your training, everything in there, right? And then take that, input it manually into my fitness pal. If you wanna try, play around with the macros, it's entirely up to you. You wanna know more about macros, let us know below. But then, the most important thing, one more tip, do not counter in your training, i.e. when you go onto these apps, you can then turn around, you can input your food, you can input your fluids, and you can also input your, your training, which will then take calories away. But if you've turned around and done your TDEE, it's, it's already accounted for that. It's accounted for your training. So the problem is, is that you then start going, oh, what if I go, go and burn 300 calories in a workout? I'm gonna take them out, it gives me 300 calories to go and eat a Snickers, so I'm gonna do that. And it can start to create, as you can see, a bit of an imbalance, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about your training, it's completely separate to your nutrition. Anyway, on that, thank you all so much for watching. If you loved the video, give it a massive thumbs up. If you've got any more questions, as we always say, bang them below, we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Keep being awesome, guys, and please do enjoy a nice Easter egg this weekend. See you later.